Recently, we've had a few inquiries about posterior elbow impingement, posterior medial elbow impingement, posterior lateral elbow impingement, and osteophytic changes in the elbow. Basically, what that means is pinching in the back of the elbow or bone spurring in the back of the elbow as a result of throwing. We want to address that in this video and then talk about some things that you can do to improve your symptoms and ultimately get back to throwing the way you want to throw. Guys, welcome back to Overhead Athletics. Max Wardell here. We're going to talk about posterior, posterior lateral, and posterior medial elbow impingement and kind of some of the implications for throwing. So when you actually throw, you reach elbow extension and you should reach it slightly out in front of the plane of your scapula, meaning you release the ball just out in front of you. So when that happens too far back this way, when you reach that elbow extension back here, or slam into it, slam into it up here, same difference. You are reaching maximal elbow extension with momentum trying to bring you farther into elbow extension. And that's when we start to develop pain right along here. Sometimes pain in here that can be you know, confused with pain that causes Tommy John surgery or pain around the outside. A lot of times we see this stuff in our guys that have had UCL symptoms and UCL injuries or UCL surgeries because the elbow gets loose and sloppy. When it's sliding around in there, there's too much shear force on that bone and it eventually starts to develop osteoblastic reactions and eventually some, some bone spurring. And we've even seen some osteochondrosis of that. So there's actually a breakdown of the bony tissue so there's a lot of things that can happen on that posterior medial and posterior lateral elbow, depending on what's going on. And usually we see it more on the posterior medial side, but we sometimes see it on the posterior lateral side. Lateral being towards the outside, medial being towards the inside, posterior being black. So back. So that osteoblastic reaction, it always occurs when there's a constant pounding and it's trying to protect that bone. And what we'll kind of do from for that is we'll try to mobilize it, get you that full elbow extension back. You know, I think it's always important first though to make sure that you don't have any sort of bone chips or loose bodies floating around in the joint that's precluding your elbow extension or any sort of other condition. So a differential diagnosis done by a physician, orthopedic physician is a great option prior to doing some of this stuff. But if maybe you don't, you know if nothing's going on in your elbow really structurally and you're still having problems, this is some of the stuff we'll do. So we've talked about these mobilizations in the past. I wanna go through some stuff we've already shown you and some different things you can do. So we'll, we'll strengthen the forearm musculature, especially the medial forearm, because it stabilizes the inside of the elbow. So basically, if that bone is going and torquing this way, so here's the edge, here's the humerus bone here, here's your olecranon on this bone tip, and it's constantly hitting that edge as your forearm lays back this way, boom, boom, or when your elbow extends at the end of the throw, we gotta make that more secure and the way we do that is we try to get these as strong as possible on the inside of the arm. The other thing we can do is try to get that tricep a little bit stronger and that can kind of help seat the olecranon in the fossa the right way. These aren't gonna be huge changes, but sometimes one quarter of a millimeter in one direction and another half millimeter in the other direction is all you really need for that clearance. We're talking about little tiny minute changes. So we're gonna do forearm strengthening, elbow mobilization, so try to get more range and then some tricep strengthening. And then the most important component is improving the way in which you throw. We've done videos on this in the past. We'll talk about it in this video and I'm gonna show you one way in which we can actually improve that. So we'll need the elbow more flexed in the beginning, get it farther out in front of the chest before you reach terminal elbow extension. I'm gonna show you one drill with an athlete that we've worked with. And then we're actually gonna go through this entire progression, talk about it a little bit, and then you guys are gonna be expected to go out there, attempt these mobilizations, attempt these exercises, continue to implement them over a period of time and see how you do. Most important component, like we said, is how you're actually throwing. If you do strong, maybe you're already strong, maybe you already have great elbow extension, but you're not doing the right things in your throwing motion, you're gonna be largely unsuccessful. So. You gotta fix your throwing motion, but first you gotta fix some strength deficits and some things like that. Let the elbow calm down, then get into your throwing motion. Even though it's the most important component, it comes last in the progression, but 
that's going to be a super, super important component that we have actually covered for you in our return to throw programs on our website, which are like a hundred bucks. You know, we go through all of our different throwing stuff. We have exercises in there, arm care, all that stuff. And we also have a phase specific throwing program for you guys that are healthy guys that aren't recovering from an injury. So check those out 12 week program and a 30 day program to get you back on track. You can use in conjunction with a return to throw uh, program from your physician. So that's on our website, overheadathletics.com. But without further ado, let's actually get into the mobilization and then some of the exercises. Let's get into some of these exercises. I wanna strengthen that medial forearm, but I wanna do it in a position where I'm at during the throw. I'll get into a lunge stance or a split stance. If I got hamstring limitations, I'll just do that too. I'll come out, not directly out to the side, about five, 10 degrees in front of that. And here, I've got a weighted thing I can use a bat to, and I'm gonna, just gonna come right up from palm up to there. Now, what am I doing? I'm strengthening my pronator muscle close to the end range of elbow flexion. So if I get pain when I go all the way, maybe I don't, maybe I only get it in the throw, but if I do get pain when I go all the way, I'll flex just a little bit. And I'm strengthening that pronator just shy of that position, just shy of where it causes me pain. So now I've strengthened my pronator. I'll do sets for endurance to start. And then once I have some muscular endurance here, I'm gonna build the strength. From there, I should have kept that in my hand. I'm gonna go onto my side on a bench here, 90 degrees, because I wanna keep it from gapping here too. And I'm right there, right there, right there, right there. So I'm doing it at 90. I'll bring it out here, right there, right there there so I'm controlling it that way and then I can flip strengthen a different part of the range of motion now it's really tough when I'm in full deviation laterally or ulnarly right there right there take the shoulder component out I'll do it right there so now keep in mind what I'm doing I'm not just haphazardly doing this I'm doing it in elbow flexion this way in this way, side lying. Notice that every time I'm taking my pinky towards the side of my forearm, not my pointer finger, that's the opposite side of the arm. So pinky towards the forearm or towards the sky. Same thing here. I really should have a foam roller or something under my head. Right there, right there. Right there, and this is tough to control. This isn't an easy exercise. Choke up on the bat if you need. Now, if I've done that, I've done forearm strengthening here from palm up to thumb up, palm up to thumb up, and then there, pinky towards the forearm, pinky towards the sky. I've done a lot of forearm strengthening there. And from here, I'll come through with a kettlebell. This one's fairly light. But if you're starting for endurance, that's fine. And I'm, I'm not doing it like this. So the bottom of the kettlebell is down. I'm grabbing that thing, I'm grabbing that sucker, and I'm trying to point the bottom of the kettlebell to the sky. Boom. Now I'm working my tricep while I'm working muscles on the inside of my forearm. So I'm working these muscles in here. The other thing I can do is I can do some wrist curl things if I really want to fatigue it out at the end. But after I go through this little circuit, I go through an elbow mobilization. So I'll do my forearm, boom, I'll do two, three sets of 20, two, three sets of 15. I'll grab, or I'll lay down, same thing with the bat. If the bat's too heavy or you don't have something like this, grab a uh, golf, uh, golf club, a little lighter. Do the same thing there, grab my kettlebell, do it there. Now I've got a band. If you haven't watched our elbow extension video, you're gonna to wanna to check that out. I've got it hooked right above the tip of my elbow. Once I get here, I can show you. So it's right above that tip of my elbow. It's actually on the upper arm bone. And now I can generate an enormous, cause I got, I'm pinned down, I'm doing a little compression. I can generate an enormous pull forward unlocking that joint a little bit, pulling more into extension, but also gliding the bones. So the harder that thing pulls forward, the more of a glide, more of a stretch on the front, 
but also the more extension. And if you're having problems here, you're gonna need to go check out that video. I showed you guys a way where you can do the mobilization before reaching end range, where you do it with a little bit of flexion. So you're gonna need to check that out if you haven't yet, if this bothers you. But I like this one because I can apply compression and sometimes compression, you know, we talk about traction a lot, something else we showed you in that video. Sometimes compression seats it in there better for someone that's got a little instability. So when I pull, I'm stretching on a lot of the structures that I maybe don't need to stretch if I have some instability that's causing this posterior medial impingement. I know a lot of you guys out there are using plyo care balls, different sand filled balls. All you need is your standard five ounce, you know, sand filled ball here. And what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna throw from a couple positions because we often see these guys that are ending up whipping out and around this way or pushing up this way. As you see in this kid, he's actually coming from a low elbow and pushing up and across that way, slamming into elbow extension. The other common pattern we see is guys like this kid right here, dropping down and back and wrapping out and around. So they wrap out and around, slam into elbow extension, or push up and that way and slam into elbow extension prematurely. So we're gonna do something here. We're gonna pre-position you into a position that we call the IR apex. From here, you're gonna keep the ball in and you're gonna pull through with the elbow. So you're going up and over with the elbow. So it's a big step and go. Right here, I'm rotated a little away from the target, nice athletic position. And then I go. Go again here, nice and balls facing away from me, back the hand towards my head, elbows bent beyond 90 degrees, I'm gonna go that way and throw it. So here we go. So now I'm patterning this. Now what I can do is I can start with the ball straight out in front of you, and I'm gonna pull it in like a bow and arrow. As I go, I can start high, sometimes easier. If I got somebody with a low elbow, I may start a little bit lower and pull up. So I'll show you both those variations, so here, I'm pulling in. I'm starting my step first though. Step and then go. Balls are all the way from me. I can do these with a the baseball too. Now if I have someone that's a low elbow, I may come here and come up, but the ball has to go up higher than my elbow. So I don't end up here, I end up there. And then I go. This way I'm getting my chest forward, I'm pulling down and I'm not hitting the end of my elbow extension back here or there. So if you like the video, subscribe to the channel and like it for us. Every time you guys like a video, it tells me what you guys wanna see and what you guys like, but also it helps boost the channel up, get it to more baseball players who want to see these videos and need help you know, with posterior elbow impingement or have had UCL repair and need some help getting back to the field. So it helps other players out. So go ahead and like the channel. And if you're new, subscribe. If you're not new and you're not subscribed, shame on you, you better subscribe right now. And check out our website. Like we said, on our website, we have return to throw progressions that are gonna teach you to get your arm in the right position. And we have different progressions that are also going to not only teach you to get in the right position, but teach you to control that position with static and dynamic strength. And that's in our corrective exercise program. But for someone that's had posterior elbow impingement or has posterior elbow impingement, the most important thing is gonna be correcting the way in which you throw.